This video is going to show you how to replace the gear in a shoreline reel. Uh, this happens to be for my power cord. I've got a 2006 Monaco Camelot uh, DSQ. Um, anyways, as you can see, mine is located right in this little box. You probably can't see it very good. I don't know if you can see, there's the shoreline reel. Shows the model number and everything. I don't know if you can get to that, but. Anyway, so it mine so mine quit working. So when I when I hit my power, hit, turn the power on, I can hear the motor running, uh, but it is not pulling the cord back in. This seems to be pretty common. It's a gear that fails inside. Um, here's the gear right here. You can buy this replacement gear. There's some directions. It comes with rivets and everything. Um, you could buy it. I think the guy's name is John Dalmorph. Um, I'll put it in the link. He's out of California. Um, but he sells these gears so um, right there of course obviously I can't do it from here I'm gonna have to go inside my coach and I'll show you that here in a sec how to where I how I, how I have to get to mine so most of them are um, actually in little bays you know the bays or whatever like my water reel is in the bay that one's starting to click so I'm gonna have to replace that gear as well so the only the only way to access my power reel for my power cord is in the in the rear bathroom there's actually a little access panel right here this just pops right off this is my access cover right there's the reel i still can't reach in there to disassemble it because there's four bolts that actually go through that go through the wood on the bottom that's what secures it um, so i'm thinking i'm going to have to take that floor out right there which of course I'm gonna have to unscrew, take those out. I've already, there were two shelves in here. I removed those already because I'm putting a washer dryer combo in here. But anyways, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to remove these and then I'll be able to pop the floor right up and hopefully I'll be able to get to it and I'll show you from there. So I've taken off this rail, it was right here. They're just screws holding it in, Phillips screws, just like the back one. And it appears just to be a false wall, as you can see, it'll come right out. Those back screws weren't even attached. The bottom one was attached. All the rest of them were just going into nothing. Also appears this rear wall is just a false wall as well. And it just comes out and that gets me back to all my hookups for my washer dryer. But again, my whole goal is I need to get to this, open up this floor so I can get down to my shore reel. And then this floor with the carpet on it, I just took a screwdriver, push it down in there, and again, it'll come up right up as well. All right, so to get this other wall off over here, I took this shelf bracket off. Then you have to remove that bottom screw as well on this side. You can see it's not even attached up there. But this whole thing just comes right off as well. Again, my whole goal is I need to get to the floor. I need to get down in there so I can get to my shore reel. So I had to take up, take off the framing that was back here. It went from there across there to hold, it held up the dummy wall that covered up all the plumbing and stuff. You just basically have to hammer it out. It's got, they stapled it in the bottom. And then up here, they stapled it off to the sides up there. As you can see, look how many staples they put in. So I just got to hammer it out. Not sure if I'll put it back up or not. So I've got the floor out, and it basically, after I took out that, the framing that was right there in the back there, they had, they had these, all these screws toenailed in. See that right there? They got toenailed all the way around the edges. And as you can see, see how it's all just breaking right there? See how it all just breaks right up there? So the way they designed this isn't good. I, considering this is where my 150 to 200 pound washer dryer is gonna go, I'd imagine it's over 100, well I know it's at least 150. There are no supports in here either. Granted, I can get to my um, my reel, but there are no supports in here. So I'm gonna take some two by fours and make some supports before I put this piece of wood back in. I may just get a whole other piece of wood as well and screw it, down, screw it down into the two by fours so it actually will hold a um, my washer dryer combo back here. <laughs> Anyways, so there you go.
So I finally got to my shoreline reel, which is located in, under my back rear closet in the bathroom. This is just where all my towels go right here, and this is where a washer dryer is gonna go. Anyways, finally got to it, um, and I'm about to replace the gear that went bad. So first thing I do recommend is that you do unplug from your power source. Um, so make sure there's no power coming into this. Um, the gear is located on the opposite side where the power goes in. So you can see right here, my power goes in right to this side. So my gear is located on that back side. A um, couple things to do, you're gonna need to disconnect where the power comes from for the switch, you know, the on off switch um, right there. I recommend taking a picture so you know which, which one goes which, it is color coded, at least on mine it is. Um, I am going to disconnect. You see my power cord is secure to the floor right there. So I'm pro probably going to take that off. Um, and then there are four bolts. There's a bolt right there. There's a bolt right back there. There's one on this back side. You can see straight down. And then there's one over here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's straight down there. Anyways, take those four bolts off. It just bolts right to the floor. Um, I'm then going to roll it on its side and uh, go from there. Alrighty, so again, my shore power is disconnected now. Um, I did disconnect the wires for the switch. Be very careful with this. It was a little challenging to get them off. They've been on since 2006, so I guess that's understandable. I just used a little bit of WD-40, just some, uh, any kind of lubricant or whatever, put a couple sprays in there. I took a regular screwdriver and just pried it very carefully as well, like this, just turning the screwdriver like this. Prying it eventually came off. I did take this wire, this uh, wire screw off, holding that off. And now I am taking off the bolts. I do recommend if you're in a tight spot, I've got a couple, I've got some extensions. Looks like this is a, what is it? A three eight socket that I'm using to take those bolts. Who knows what yours are, but an extension makes life easier. So I'm gonna take those four bolts off, securing this to the floor and we'll go from there. All right, so again, I've got the wires for the switch disconnected. I've got the four bolts off. There's what they look like. This one back here was a pain to get to, but it is unscrewed. Um, I'm going to need to cut these zip ties, all the wires here. I'm going to need to cut those zip ties off, to at least the big one for sure. And there are two more uh, mounts, wire mounts that hold these wires to the floor that you have to take off. There's one right there right there and then there's another one right back in there so I'm gonna have to take unscrew those real quick um, and I should be able to put this on its side and we'll go from there so I've literally had to take every zip tie off just about so far and then the wire it's hold get being held back here I don't know if you could see that or not there's a zip tie there a zip tie down towards the bottom hopefully once I take those off I'll be able to pull this away so I did have to take the zip ties off this. This is just the, the switch wire that went right in there. It zip tied all down there. So I disconnect that and now I can finally pull this out and move it on its side. All right, so I finally have it out. And as you can see, I can move it around at will. Of course, again, just to recap, I had to disconnect the two um, wires that go to the switch. I had to take the four bolts out that hold it to the floor. I had to cut all the zip ties out. Um, and now I'm ready to drill out the rivets. You got two rivets right there and then you got three on each side holding this, holding this in. And the pack that you get from the guy in California, I will post his contact information as well. Um, comes with four short rivets, six long rivets. Um, and then the gear of course, and. Uh, when I spoke with him on the phone, he just said to use some white lithium grease, just any kind of grease. You don't have to put a bunch on, but just grease this fitting before you put it on. So I'm going to drill out these rivets and go from there. Just wanted to show a quick video of uh, me drilling out the rivets. For those of you who have never drilled out a rivet, just get a drill bit slightly larger than the hole that the rivet goes in. And Thank you. 
this one again. And there you go. That's all you got to do, and you're going to do it on those two, and then three on this side, and then three on that side. I will mention this. Once you get the tops of the rivets off, you do have to drill all the way through into the box to get it completely off. So once the top of the rivet comes off, you do have to drill all the way in so it goes all the way into the box just like so. You got to do that on all six. All right, so after you get all 10 of the rivets completely drilled out, this piece just comes right off like so. That's what it looks like on the inside there. Here's the gears that turn this. So there's one, there's two, and there is the culprit right there. As you can see, it's cracked. So I'm going to take that one off, put the new one in. Grease them, grease it all up real good, put it back together, and I should be good to go. All right, so I've cleaned up the area, getting ready to put this all back together. Um, as you can see, here is the here's the bad gear. It just literally broke in half. So the new gear is going to go on right there. I am going to grease it up. I'm going to grease these up a little a little better as well. Here's the new gear. As you can see, it's got a flat edge. And right there is the flat edge that it's gonna go on. So it can only go on one way. So I'm gonna spray some lithium grease on this, grease this up a little bit, put her all back together. Okay, so before I put this all back together, I'm gonna to lubricate um, the new piece, the new gear that goes in the middle right there. As I mentioned, there is a flat spot in it and there's a flat spot that it goes right over. So you can't put this in wrong. I wiped up some of the grease in here and just reused it, put it back on the gears. As you can see, the gears still have some grease in it. I'm just gonna hit it with some silicone as well. And again, just some uh, silicone spray. The guy said you put some on. You don't have to put a bunch on, he said. This is this stuff's pretty this stuff dries too, so I'm just gonna hit all this. You can use whatever grease you want. The guy who um the guy in Cali when I talked to him, he just said to he just said to go ahead and he said you don't have to use a bunch of it. So, but anyway, so as you can see, I got some, some on there, Just wipe up some of the excess. It's all good. It's all ready to go back in. Bang. Alrighty, so we got that now. Again, this is the old piece. We don't need that. It's garbage. Here's the new one. It's all lubed up and ready to go. I'm just going to put it right, line up the flat spot. You do have to push it down sort of hard. We're going to tap it just a little bit with a hammer. Be very careful when you're doing this. Last thing you want to do is crack it. Just nice and easy. It's going to be right. So it's nice and flush right there. So then these pieces will just go in like this. Like so. Those are going to sit right in there. There's a gear right there that goes in there. It's going to sit just like that. So I'm probably going to tap it down just a little more so these bigger gears are right in the center of this gear. Because this thing isn't going to move. Actually, I'll just leave it right there. So it looks like it lines up good. 
Now I just got to put the cover back on, re-rivet it, um, and I'll be good to go. Now I do want to point out, before you put the cover back on this, um, make sure that there's an even amount of space between the gear and this metal piece right here. Now the cover has two pins or two shafts that the big gears go on. So that's gonna keep the gears from moving. That's gonna keep them in that position, but make sure this gear is not on this metal right here. So make sure there's an even gap right there and there and right there and there as well. So now then when you put the cover back on, it's gonna go in these holes. It's gonna sink down on and it's gonna hold it in that position. That's when you put the, the, new, the new rivets back on. So I've got the cover back on lined up nice again the kit comes with four shorter rivets those are the four that go right here six longer rivets for the three on this side and the three on that side now i'm just going to use my rivet tool and just rivet these things on and i'll be good to go all right so i'm about to put the rivets on i've got my rivet tool here the only thing you do is just Slide it right down over like so. Just like that, push down. You just gotta squeeze away. And there you go, I'm gonna do that all the way around and for the other 10. All right, so I've got all the bolts back in, the four bolts, it's bolted to the ground. Got the wires connected back up. I have it zip tied real nice down there and along the bottom. So the white, no loose wires are gonna hit the reel as it's turning. And we're ready to test her out. Alrighty, in the moment of truth now, let's see if she's gonna wind in. And bada bang, we're good and we can pull it back out. Good to go.